here we are on the courses page. First option is to manage the courses and categories. So you will see on your site, you probably have a number of categories set up and they can be expanded because you can obviously have subcategories as well. Uh, we've set up on this site something that, that we'd usually do, an archive category for courses that are old, but we don't necessarily want to delete them, so we could move them into that category, and also a category for testing. Uh, both of these categories, as we can see, are actually hidden. They are they are greyed out, but we can also see that the, uh, the eye over here enables us to show or hide that category. We can move categories up and down to reorder them, because this will be the order that courses are displayed on your front page or in your course listings, wherever that is. And then we obviously have options to edit the categories as well. So deleting categories, assigning particular cohorts to categories, so on and so forth. Once you click on a category, just slightly further down, you'll see the courses that are actually within that category. And again, they can be deleted or reordered. One of the things we can also do is to move them. So to quickly reorganize courses into the correct categories, if they're not already in there, we can select a particular course, we can choose a specific category, and then we can click move, and that will actually move that um, across. So very easy. And we can, of course, select multiple courses at the same time to do that. The other thing that's worth mentioning is that as well as being able to move courses and categories with these arrows, it is possible to also quickly uh, reorder either selected categories or all categories and to choose the order of that of that sort. So it could be by ID, it could be by category name, uh, lots of options and the same with courses so if you have suddenly created lots of courses but they're not in a particularly good order uh, or sensible order you can perhaps use one of these options to quickly to quickly organize that next we have a add category option which is also of course possible from that previous screen um, we could place this at this point underneath uh, another category so create a subcategory and it's all always useful to give a description so it's clear to everyone what this category is actually for we can restore courses directly from here as well so our, our backup and restore of courses obviously you will likely have on your site automated course backups running and so uh, at this stage as an administrator you can come in here you can choose a file or you can you can drag a, a backup file straight into here or in fact you may have backups that are located elsewhere within the system uh, in the private area or from the automated backups and you just be able to select any of those backup files and restore it from here um, personally, I don't like the use of the word import here. I think this should be a restore um, as here, because when we deal with courses, we think of backup and restore. And in fact, Moodle has an import function, which is for copying items from one course to another. So um, don't get too confused with the use of import here. We are basically restoring courses here. A really useful area is the course default settings. So when you create a new course on your Moodle site, it is created with a number of default settings. And by an administrator intelligently and knowledgeably setting these up, it's potentially going to save teachers an awful lot of time because you can set courses up uh, as they should be, as, a, as is appropriate for your organisation. So if you generally set courses up so that they're hidden to begin with until they're actually uh, created and, and polished and available. You could change the visibility to hidden. You could choose between topic and weekly format, um, topic format being the default in newer versions of Moodle. You may decide that the maximum number of sections in fact should be 10. Uh, you could say that hidden sections by default 
are shown in a collapsed form or or the, that default which is completely invisible you can choose whether sections are shown on one page or all sections and remember these are just default values the teacher can alter these themselves once they go into the course from from course settings um, if you're running short courses predominantly why not set the default duration to 30 days because that's probably going to help with the whole enrollment side of things so good good options there we also have settings about forcing languages if you're running a multilingual site you might not want to do that if i'm running just a site and i need everyone to to be interacting here in english i might force the language there we have a number of announcements which is what we'll see in uh, announcements and news forums we can decide whether by default the gradebook is shown to students or not and and whether they can see activity reports or not um, Again, remember, these are just the defaults. They can be changed within the course. It's uh, likely that you'll want to set the maximum upload size as well for your courses. So if you're running quite a small site and you don't want teachers uploading massive files, you could bring that down a bit. Um, the maximum showing here at the moment is 32 because that's the site-wide limit, probably set in PHP on the server that could obviously be increased by an administrator to, to 64 or 128 if you were dealing with large media files but uh, it's still probably quite a good idea to bring down that course maximum just to encourage um, teachers to, to upload things which are an appropriate size rather than just uploading the hugest files they can find you know and then we have the completion tracking whether that is on by default or not and also group modes so lots of options in here for an administrator to think about maybe have a chat with some of the teaching staff about what would be the sensible defaults to have here we have a course request option um, not too many sites use this but it is a uh, uh, quite quite useful in that if you enable course requests and then you um, select a category for those to, to be in you can then say okay let me allow teachers to actually request a new course directly to our sort of help desk or administrator account and then we could have a number of people who are able to actually approve that so who does that notification go to so if you run a system run a site where you want teachers to actually ask for courses to be created when when they need a new course this system the course request system can be very useful in other scenarios we might be using completely different methods to create courses we may create them all at the beginning of the year or we may use uh, LDAP synchronization to create courses lots of different methods but this is certainly one that could be useful and then we have upload courses so this allows you as an administrator to upload a csv file which is just comma separated values so it's just a text file with commas and it would have for example the course full name the course short name perhaps the enrollment dates uh, and in the same way that you could upload users using a csv file you can also create courses using this method so if you're at the beginning of the year and you know you need all the same courses that you had last year well it would be quite um, efficient to have you know a spreadsheet with all the this data in to quickly run through that and change 2026 to 2027 and then upload that and create batch create a whole load of new courses in one go so a really efficient option it does just like with batch uploading users it does give you a preview so you can sort of double check your your file is in the correct format and is going to work as you as you think it's going to work because you don't really want to make a thousand courses that are wrong that's uh that's not something you want you want to do too often um and you can also you know these defaults are pretty sensible it's not going to allow any deletions of courses or renames of courses or resets of courses so these are the kind of safe options um if you do allow uh, updating of existing courses or you know new courses and updating existing courses 
be extra, extra careful that you're not going to do anything horrible, like rename all the courses incorrectly and then confuse everyone. So, so do be careful with these kind of fast functions. Use that preview, double check your work, um, but a very efficient way to to mass create or batch create courses, perhaps at the beginning of the year or the beginning of the semester. The other thing we have on the courses page is the uh, is options around the backups. So we have the general backup defaults. So what happens with our backups when we when we generally make them? So teachers on many sites can make backups within a course, and these are the the default settings and the options that they're going to have. Um, by default, here we are including users in those backup files. That could be hugely important for you to understand in terms of data protection. Uh, there is a possibility, however slim, that a file, a backup of a course could be taken and restored onto a different site uh, legitimately or, or perhaps not. Quite often the ability to backup courses is taken away from teachers anyway. Um, we also have the, the log time. Um, logs can build up pretty quickly in a in a highly active Moodle course. So it may not be needed that we back up all the log files if we're going to restore this as a new course and reset it. Uh, we probably wouldn't need the logs from that old course. That they're, they're still there anyway. Um, but you know we don't need to import those logs to a new course. So uh, some options around that as well. So that was the general backup defaults. We also have the same for the general import defaults, which again is the uh, is basically the, the restore options. Um, so a, a good option here is if you are copying, uh, if you are restoring courses from a different site, you may have a user with the name admin. And if you try to import courses with a user called admin from the other site, it'll cause all sorts of problems um, and conflict. So this allows you to uh, resolve that on the fly. However, I would say you should never have an account on your Moodle system with the name admin because that is just far too insecure and far too obvious. Uh, and again, the same type of uh, options around bringing importing information in you know do we want to import all those activities maybe we do but we don't want any calendar events we don't want to bring the quiz block uh, the quiz bank with its questions and so on um, so again these need thinking about carefully in terms of what you are trying to achieve by bringing in this backup file and then finally, the automated backup setup. So these are the settings that will apply with the automatic scheduled backups, which of course will usually be set to run uh, overnight. So as we can see here, we've, we've enabled the backups here. They're gonna run every day. It's gonna run those backups on the, from the cron job at one o'clock in the morning. And it's going to put the courses, those backup files in the course backup file area. Um, more usually on a on a larger site, we may actually alter that and have a specified directory for backups. It's probably easier for system administrators to deal with. So, uh, for example, on a um, kind of Linux system, we might have home uh, backups Moodle site and we might be saving our backup files into there as a specific location so it's easier to, to deal with them. We can also specify the minimum number of backups that should be kept. Uh, I have no idea why this goes to 500. That seems like a rather high amount. Um, but one or two or five, I'm sure, is usually absolutely fine. Um, we can also decide to delete backups that are over a certain uh, age. But even if we do that, we can tell the system to make sure it keeps at least, you know, one or two safety copies of that. So we never, so we always have at least one backup of everything. A um, couple of other options. Use course name in the backup is actually switched off by default. The default is no. Um, personally, I always like to switch that on 
for sites that I'm managing because I find it easier to look at the course name rather than trying to work out all the courses from their ID numbers. Again, we're dealing with automated backups here. So should we skip the courses that are hidden? Uh, in my case, that would be the courses in the hidden area and the archive area. Um, there may be times when you want to skip those if you're having, for instance, problems with your backups and you're trying to minimize the, the amount of time backups take to run, then it could be that you don't you can ignore hidden courses for the moment. You can also skip courses that haven't been modified over a certain period. So if I if courses haven't been modified for three months, I probably don't need to back them up every day. And this option will let me do that. And of course, even better, I can say don't back up courses if they haven't been modified since the previous backup. Uh, there's no point in that. We're using extra computing cycles to back up something which hasn't changed. However, do note that this requires logging to be enabled on your site. If you haven't got logging enabled, then there's no way for the system to be able to tell whether that's changed. So uh, important point there. And then finally, as expected, the usual kind of backup settings that we need to look at about whether we're including the users and the filters and the blocks and the comments and so on and so forth. <laughs>